we should think more of code is always a liability and sometimes an asset. Mm -hmm. you know, every single line of code we write has got to be understood by a person or maybe an AI these days, but it's got to be understood by somebody. It's got to be led and there's, and there's a cost to that. Again, well said. if you're paying for an AI agent to lead it and you're paying by the you know, million tokens or whether you're paying a software engineer to lead it, there's a cost to reading it, cost to understanding it, cost to maintaining and supporting it. It's even a, you know, a cost, no matter how small, to executing it. You know, it takes energy. So every single redundant line of code is increasing your costs. It's building mm -hmm. up a liability. Now, sometimes it's also an asset because it provides immense value. Again, you mentioned you work for an IDE company. Can we say JetBrains? Because I'm a big fan say of JetBrains. Say JetBrains, let's do it. Look, you work for JetBrains. Now, your code there, a lot of it, I hope, is an asset. You're you know, a profitable business, to the best of my knowledge. So your code is both a liability. You've got to support it. You've got to maintain it. You've mm -hmm. got to keep adding features to it. And you've got to then support those features. You've got to maintain the code. You've got to fix bugs in it. You've got to bring new engineers on and, and ramp them up on that. It's also an asset because it's what you sell. It's the, the product that you sell. I think we're, we're missing that gap. A lot of people are like 13,000 lines of code a day. If a lot of that is liability and only a little bit is asset, you're creating an awful lot of financial debt, never mind technical debt for the organization.